Let's talk about the nine most common low carb myths, okay? Uh, you hear this all the time, and I just wanna cover each one of them. The first one is that low carb diets are a fad, okay? Now, a fad is some intense and widely shared enthusiasm for something that is short lived. So the question is, why would it be short lived? If you're benefiting on a low carb diet, you're gonna stick with it. Why would you stop it? And why is it so bad to be enthusiastic about something that works? Yes, there are a lot of people that are intensely enthusiastic about keto and low carb diets and intermittent fasting because they feel so much better. So the low carb diets are absolutely positively not a fad. Uh, some people would want you to believe that, but it's absolutely growing and growing and growing. It's not gonna be short-lived simply because it works. Next one, it's okay for weight loss, but not for long-term health. Now this is completely ridiculous. Why would something work short-term and not work in the long run? Now the argument that certain people will use is that they'll take the evidence of, or the studies of uh, traditional or classical keto uh, for epilepsy, where they have low quality ingredients and you have all these different side effects like kidney stones and gout and high cholesterol and bad breath. Well, we're not recommending that version. We are recommending the healthy low carb or keto version of the ketogenic diet. All right, next one, number three. All that fat is going to make you get a heart attack. Absolutely, positively not true. First of all, um, I never met anyone that is consuming all the bacon grease from the bacon. They fry up the bacon and they toss out the grease and they leave the crispy bacon, okay? Um, most people don't eat a lot of butter, okay, in one sitting. Now, what's interesting about butter is I used to crave butter as a child. I didn't know that I needed a lot of butter for the vitamin K2 um, and I was very, very deficient. In fact, I remember wanting to consume a whole pound of butter. So my parents wouldn't do that because uh, they, at the time, had this idea that uh, fat was bad. But if you crave butter, you probably need something in the butter. But the point is that we're recommending healthy fats, fats that normally come with protein. And uh, no, fat is not unhealthy, especially if you're not adding the carbohydrates to the fat. So when you add the carbohydrates to the fat, that becomes a problem. But we're doing low carbohydrates, okay? All right, number four, it's not sustainable. This is hilarious. Low carb diets get rid of your cravings. Low carb diets make you so you're not hungry anymore. Guess what? That's very sustainable. When you start adding in the carbs and the frequent eating and even a low calorie diet, that's not sustainable. But keto and low carb is very sustainable. Number five, it's not healthy to omit a food group. Well, first of all, that is completely made up by the food manufacturing companies that sell certain foods that really shouldn't be in our diet in the first place. There's no such thing as essential sugar, okay? Or essential refined carbohydrates. So it's extremely healthy to omit certain food groups. All right, number six, you don't wanna cut your carbs because you're gonna be cutting down your vegetables. Well, whoever said that doesn't understand that we don't count vegetables in our equation. We want you to consume lots of vegetables, as in seven to 10 cups uh, per day. So that's what we want, and uh, we're not cutting down on vegetables. And you can also have some berries. Number seven, your brain needs carbs. If you don't have carbs, you're gonna be tired. Now, whoever's telling you that is a complete, you know what, I'm not gonna go there. Your brain can very easily run on ketones. It loves ketones. The carbohydrates, are the things that destroy the brain and cause Alzheimer's, okay? When you reduce carbs, your, bo your body automatically starts making ketones and your brain thrives on ketones. You'll have better mental endurance. It helps your cognitive function. If there's damage in the brain, ketones will bypass that mechanism and feed the brain cells directly. And I'm really talking about those people who are telling you that your brain needs carbs. They have usually have brain damage because they've been consuming too many carbohydrates. A low carb diet is not good for a diabetic <laughs> because the rationale is you're gonna end up with low blood sugar, hypoglycemia. That is complete and utter insanity. Think about what diabetes is. It's a condition of high sugar, right? So 
we're trying to lower it. Guess what's going to happen when you go into low carb? Your blood sugar is going to come down. It's going to decrease the need for medication. Okay. You work with your doctor, you take less medication. Guess what? Now, less medication, your blood sugar goes normal. Okay. It's not going to go hypo. It's going to go normal and you're going to feel much better. And number nine, a low carb diet is really a high protein diet and that's damaging for the kidneys. Again, absolutely not true. Um, a low carb diet, as in healthy keto, is moderate amount of protein, three to six ounces, maybe a little bit more, but it's not unlimited protein. All right, there you have it, the nine low carb myths. And now I want you to check out the myths of intermittent fasting. It's right on this page right here.